This is Nick. Nick, uh, when he went to school in Germany, he hated the subject German and other subjects. He did an apprenticeship after school and has been working as a construction worker, as you can see, ever since. He's really good at his job, um, but he doesn't necessarily need to write or read for his job. So when he, for example, gets home from work and he receives a bill from his uh, insurance provider or he wants to read and understand the new terms and condition for a new software he bought, he just doesn't really understand the text because they are using technical terms, the sentence structure is really complicated and he just gets really, really frustrated. There are 30 million people in Germany alone who are in the same situation as Nick. 30 million people. And this is why I'm here today and I would like to talk to you about plain language and why plain language is actually so important. I'm Julia. Uh, and I'm also a freelancer, as uh, Lucas already introduced me. And um, I would like to raise your awareness for plain language today and show you why writing in easy English, easy German, or whatever your language is, isn't actually that easy. And it's kind of an art you have to learn and to practice in order to master it. First, we're going to talk about what plain language actually is today, because maybe you've heard uh, of plain language for the first time today. And to give you a better idea of what plain language actually is, I'm going to share three rules with you. With you. And afterwards, I'm going to tell you how uh, I became a train, uh, plain language trainer and how you can come to, maybe. And finally, we're going to talk about uh, two projects I did with and for Supertext in the context of plain language. Let's dive right in. What is plain language? Well, we already talked about Nick. You met Nick. And Nick showed you why plain language is actually so important and why we need to communicate more in plain language. Because if 30 million people in Germany alone don't understand our communication, then the communication fails. And the goal of communication is to communicate. So we need to change that. When talking about plain language, it's important to talk about language levels first. I'm sure that everyone in this room has, at some point or another, uh, participated in a language class. And you might have heard uh, something like A1, B1, C2, and that is actually what we mean by language levels. They were established by the Council of Europe. The official name is the Common European Framework of Reference for Language, SHES, language levels. Um, they range from A1 to C2. And for example, if you start to learn English during your first or second class, you're going to learn the word car. But the word apricate, for example, you might learn at level C1 or C2, or you might never learn it because it's actually not that common and you don't really need it. Why am I talking about that? Because Okay, it's not working. Hello? This is working, working. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> Okay, so we talked about language levels. Uh, now let's uh, get to why we're talking about that. Because as you can see on the left, that uh, the majority of the population has language level B1. But 
when we look at the communication, so all the text you can, you can see on websites, letters you get from uh, official institutions, and so on and so forth, the level that is most present there, over 70%, is C1. That's a problem. Because that means that 60% of the population does not understand 80% of the communication. So communication fails. And people who write these C1 texts, they want people to understand, but they don't know that they don't, they don't understand. And this is where plain language uh, comes into play. To give you a better idea, because I assume that you in your native language and even other languages, you're capable of speaking at a C1 or C2 level even. So to give you a better idea of how it feels like for a person like Nick, to read a C1 text when actually your language level is B1, uh, I would like to ask you a question. What percentage of words do you need to know to understand a text? What do you think? How many percent? 80? 70? 60? 55? Hmm. <laughs> Someone wants to go lower? <laughs> Never heard that one, <laughs> 55. <laughs> well, we've heard it all. Let's just put it to the test. Um, I brought you a German text as an example, but even if you don't understand German or are not that good in German, it'll do the trick, so don't worry. Here you can see 60%. Can you tell me what the text is about? No. 70%? Difficult. Still difficult. 80%, we're getting there, but we're still missing some key words in order to uh, get the whole idea. 90%, you could probably tell me what the text is about. But as Germans, we like to be really sure and get all the information, so <laughs> let's stick with 100%. <laughs> that means you need to know between 90 and 100% in order to understand a text. I brought you another example to make it more clear how, it f how Nick feels when he reads the C1 text. Can any native German read this text out loud for me? Don't be shy. It's <laughs> can't do anything wrong. Okay. Ziel dieses Produkts ist zumeist die Finanzierung des Eigenheims kombiniert mit Vermögensaufbau in einer Lebensversicherung zuzüglich Gewinnbeteiligung, womit das Darlehen zum Enddatum ganz oder teilweise getilgt wird. Die zur Auszahlung kommende Versicherung am Ende der Laufzeit umfasst einen Garantiebetrag sowie einen eventuellen zusätzlichen Ertrag aus der Gewinnbeteiligung. <lacht> Eben. Der Wert der Versicherung kann jedoch am Ende der Laufzeit zur vollständigen Tilgung des Darlehens unzureichend sein. Vorbehaltlich einer Verlängerung des Darlehensvertrags müssen Sie den Rest des Darlehens in einem Fall auf eine andere Weise tilgen. Thank you very much. Can any native German without reading the text again tell me what the text is about? No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah. Actually, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what it's about. But do you think that uh, somebody like Nick would understand? Words like Gewinnbeteiligung, uh, Vorbehaltlich, Darlehensvertrag, uh, the sentence structure would be really, really difficult for him to understand. And for, bear in mind, the 30 million other people in Germany alone. So this is what the text would look like to level B1 reader. Pretty frustrating, right? That's like 50, 60 percent uh, of the text. This is why plain language is actually so important. So I've already established that uh, plain language means writing at 
be one level and kind of using words that everybody knows, that means. Um, but what could this text in plain language actually look like? This is how it could look like. Just have a look at the first two sentences. Sie möchten ein Haus kaufen. Sie können bei uns ein Darlehen erhalten. Pretty straightforward. Everybody knows what the text is about. So if I want to buy a house and if I need a loan, then I know, oh yeah, this text is for me. I need to read on. And uh, you can see here the sentences are much shorter. We're using questions and we're working with enumeration. So it's more reader friendly. You have a better view, a, a better, uh, you get a better, a better overview of the text. Well, that was difficult. <laughs> and um, it's just much easier to read. And I'm sure that you would all agree, even if you're native German and your level is C1 or C2, that this is much better for you too, right? I mean, Laura, you read the text. That's, that's better, right? <laughs> so when I do plain language trainings, uh, the people um, participating are always like, yeah, but uh, if I start writing a plain language text, people are going to think uh, that I that I'm not able to speak my language that good, they're going to laugh at me, they, they might feel patronized, um, so why should I even bother? Well, we ask people with higher education what they prefer reading and people with less education. So people with higher education, 40% of them prefer reading C1 text, 20% for people with less education, but more than half of people with higher education who understand C1, C2 level text also prefer reading B1 text. So why is that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Imagine you're coming home from work, you had a really stressful day, many deadlines you had to uh, meet, and you just want to come home, have a glass of wine, maybe play with your kids or talk to your partner. But as a freelancer, you get a letter from the tax office not the favorite subject, and uh, they use financial terms, terms you don't really know or you might, might have never heard of, and you're good at German normally, but you're like, oh, this is taking so much time, I actually just want to have dinner, I want to go to bed, um, but it takes you a lot of time to read the text, and that's frustrating even for you. So it's just much more convenient and comfortable, even for people with higher education, to read in their day-to-day -day life B1 level texts. Everybody profits. So I talked about uh, plain language, but let's make it more concrete and have a look at three rules. In total, there are 21 rules for plain language divided into four categories. First category is preparation. This is actually really important and oftentimes people are like, what, preparation? I just write my text uh, as I go along. Well. That's a problem, because before you start writing a text, you need to think about who you're talking to. And it's always, um, what I always recommend is have, having a person like Nick in mind when you're um, writing the text, or, or someone else. Because if you ask yourself beforehand, who is actually my audience, and um, what do they know, what uh, don't they know, what do I need to explain, um, then your text will be much, much better and everybody will understand. Then we have the category structure, sentences, and words. So the first rule I actually already talked about, define your target audience, because then you know what terms can I actually use. If you're writing an insurance text, does the person know uh, what, I don't know, credit means or something like that. You need to ask yourself, do the people know the technical terms I'm normally using in my day-to-day -day life or do I need to explain them so that they understand? This is why this is really important and this uh, is actually oftentimes forgotten when you write C1 text. Second rule, put the goal message at the beginning. This is actually pretty interesting because uh, when you look at C1 text, what people want from you comes at the very end. For example, when the tax office, ri office writes to you, they're like, oh, you need to fill out this form or you pay need to pay more taxes or less taxes. But the information is at the very end and it's written in a complicated way. So this is why we changed that in plain language because people don't have time. People want to know what to do, what not to do. So we put it at the beginning. It's much more satisfying. And the last rule, use active sentences. 
Why? Because passive sentences are much harder to understand for uh, readers with a level B1. For example, if I say to you, you are loved, you're happy, but you don't know if I love you, if he loves you, if she loves you, you don't know. So it's always better to say I love you or she loves you because then everybody knows who's doing what. This is, I know it's an abstract example, but it's just for you to give you an idea why it's always good to use active um, language because then people know who is doing what, yeah? So if I say the form needs to be filled out, the reader might be there, oh, okay, yeah, it needs to be filled out, but who? Me? You? Who? So use active sentences. Now we've talked about plain language. Uh, I hope I got you covered and I raised your awareness what, uh, why plain language is actually so important and why we, we need to uh, start talking and thinking more um, about plain language and how to implement it in our communication. Let's talk about how to become a trainer. Supertext collaborates with Bureautal. It's a company based in Netherlands and they actually established uh, these rules, the whole training, the scripts and the presentations we use uh, when we do the trainings for the company. And we had a one day uh, immersive training, so to say. Uh, and afterwards they have an online platform and I completed uh, over the course of several weeks uh, an online training and there you do a deep dive into all the rules and you have to complete exercises and tests um, so that you um, really that the rules really sink in. But I have to be honest, it's a journey. It's like learning a new language. So I'm not perfect. Uh, when, I re when I write a text in plain language, I have to read it again and again and again to make sure that it's in plain language. So it's not just, oh yeah, mm, I'm gonna switch it up now and write in plain language. It takes time. Um, and you need to practice it like a normal language that you're learning. Okay, I already talked about uh, some projects uh, we did with uh, Supertext, but what projects um, did we actually do? The first one was with a pharmaceutical company, and their goal was, and still is, because it's a long, long process, uh, so they want to write their package leaflets in plain language. I think we've all been, been there, you're sick, you just want to take the drug you have to take, or maybe you even have to um, use an injection, but you need to know how to do it, how to use it, when, with what, at what time, and so on. But you have this huge piece of paper, you don't know where the information is you're actually looking for, it's written in medical language, and it's just frustrating. I think we've all been there. They are well aware of that that it's frustrating to read the package leaflets and to find the information that you're looking for. And that's why they approached Supertext. So what we did was first an awareness workshop. Part of this workshop um, I used at the beginning of this presentation. And this is actually really, really important because the people participating in this workshop, they have written at a C1, C2 level for years. And they're like, why should I th change a thing? Why don't people learn my language? And it's, uh, it's really difficult at the beginning for them to change their way of doing and to understand why it's actually so important. And it's important for them to put themselves in the position of people like Nick. After this workshop, we started with a first day training. So we covered the first set of rules um, at the company's headquarters and uh, they received a homework, so an exercise, to incorporate all the rules. They received a written feedback uh, from me and we talked about um, what I noticed. I gave them tips at the beginning of the second day training. We covered the second half of the rules and to finish they had to complete a final test, like an exam. Yeah, back to school, I know. But uh, this is actually <laughs> really important um, so that uh, we make sure that they have actually understood what it's about. And we had another feedback session at the end so that they could ask all the questions and um, get more feedback and more tips from me. And now they are training their employees and it's a uh, whole process and it's actually not that easy to change package leaves because uh, the legal department is involved and so on. But um, yeah, you need to start somewhere. Second company we worked with is Generali, uh, the insurance provider. 
Their goal is to write all communications in plain language. So their letters, their website, uh, information, uh, brochures, everything. Uh, for this company, we started with the Awareness Workshop too. This is a must have, so to speak. You have to do this at the beginning. Um, and afterwards, we, did, um, we didn't do the in-person training, but an online training, so it's the, the self-study. And they had four weeks to complete it, to learn all the rules, to do the exercises, exercises on the platform, and then they re received a first homework. So the people were from uh, different departments, um, and they had to rewrite a text from their department. Then they received a feedback. It was done online, um, because it was during COVID. And um, they could ask all the questions. I told them what I noticed, um, what they could improve, and so on and so forth. After that, there was, again, a final exam. Uh, again, a text uh, within their department and another feedback session so that they're really good to go and that they understand why I changed what I changed and um, what every person specifically can improve because everyone has other difficulties when uh, learning plain language, learning to write in plain language. Yeah, so that's uh, what I've done so far with Supertext in um, uh, when it comes to plain language. And maybe you've noticed my presentation was also in plain language. And I hope you don't think, but I don't think that you that you think that I don't know how to speak English or that it was I was patronizing or anything. It's just plain language. It's much easier to understand. You don't need to. Uh, yeah, you don't need to have a really, really high level of Engli English, so maybe this presentation has also shown you that it's just easier for everyone to use plain language. Do you have any questions? Um, so, first of all, thank you. That was really interesting. Um, and my question is, so here we really clearly saw what all the benefits are, and there are a lot of them. But which cases would you say plain language isn't suitable? Or which kind of text would you say, you know what, that's just not the right strategy? That's actually a good question. Um, I, th I think it's always suitable. Um, but when it comes to legal texts or medical texts, for example, it's always uh, really important to talk to uh, the legal department to make sure that uh, the text is as good and as correct as the uh, C1, as a C1 or C2 level text would be, but it's actually possible to write uh, to write every text in plain language. And it's as as you see, as you saw maybe during my presentation, it's just uh, much better for everyone and much more convenient. You may not be able to answer this question, but are there different approaches or different? Um rules, so to speak, for writing plain languages in different languages, like between plain language in German or plain language in English, plain language in, in Hungarian? Uh, well, the, the, general, the, the general 21 rules apply to every language. Um, I know that for French, English and German, those are my languages, uh, it's, uh, they are the same, but I can speak for other languages, if maybe if it's a much more difficult language, you have to add a rule, but normally for the European, langu European languages, it's 21 rules. Danke. Thank you. I don't speak English, don't, uh, but sorry. Uh, do you want that we um, uh, translate all texts in plain language now? You mean a, sup a super text, or what, what do you yes, mean? Yes, yes. Um, I have a text. Uh, and no. <laughs> so uh, we would hope that most of the clients write their source texts in plain language. So if that's the case, that will have an impact on your translation. But it's not the idea that you now have to translate it in plain language. But I think, well, Hopefully, there will be an evolution, and at some point, source texts will be in plain language. You will automatically do it. Yeah, but maybe even not knowing it. I mean, if you have simple sentences, 
you might, in certain languages, make sometimes make longer sentences because it's more the structure of the language. But typically, if the source text is easy to understand, then the translation will be as well. Yeah. So, no worries. So I start with that and then I come back to you. <laughs> Um, when I worked for that insurance company, um, they, their marketing department had a um, desire and then met that desire to have every document stamped by the, the plain English campaign. So that is a, a body in the UK that certifies that a document is in plain English. Um, do you know whether there are, w what the requirements are of that campaign and is there something that, um, is there an intralingual translation service that, that Supertext offers that says, we will promise you that this super complicated text about an endowment mortgage, <laughs> we, we will translate that into plain English and, and it will pass that test? Is, is that something that, that is feasible, offerable? I don't know how the plain English text uh, campaign works. I just know that it exists. Well, what I can say, I don't know about Supertech, but just what I can say is, uh, I don't know uh, this campaign, um, but what Supertech normally does is assure that the, the text respect the 21 rules and that they are, um, so to speak, uh, plain language certified, as in plain language that we apply. Uh, yes. Uh, it's just to insist that it is really important also in the official communication and for instance that the Swiss government just realized that uh, uh, the Swiss government communication was not fantastic <laughs> and uh, that plain language could be a solution. So they are, they are trying to implement, to implement that and as a former journalist I would say that uh, if a journalist doesn't use plain language, he's not doing his job. I mean, uh, it's really important that you are really understood by your audience. That's all. Yes, it definitely is. But uh, there needs to, people are not that aware yet uh, of how important plain language is. So it's just starting to uh, become more and more important and more and more people are coming more and more aware. Hi, me again. <coughs> um, building on what's happened from the last couple of questions, uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out how, how to phrase this. Is there, could there be a situation where, because um, a, a lot of my translation colleagues, particularly in Germany, over the last couple of years, is, uh, are doing extra qualifications in what's called leichter Sprache, or easy language. I know it's, it's probably slightly different to, play, to play in language. It's more for people with learning difficulties. You sometimes see it on like government websites or tourism websites or anything, and they will have situations where a client will come to them and say, hey, translator, can you do this into easy, or into leichter Sprache, into easy, whatever. Could there be a similar situation? I'm probably asking the wrong people, but if Supertext could offer that as a service, and we say, hey, I'm, I'm, su I'm certified in plain language, could there be a situation where Supertext comes and say, hey, Rob, we've got a translation for you. Um, it's a plain language job, so observe this and you know we'll give you a bit of extra money or whatever. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe super tax has to The look on your face when it's <laughs> the money. So what? No. But just to make sure that leichte Sprache uh, is uh, different than einfache Sprache. Yeah? Leichte Sprache is for readers with learning difficulties and they need to be proofread by people with learning difficulties. And einfache Sprache is for the broad population, so to speak. So there's a different difference. And I suggest that you hold your breath till the panel discussion. And if during the panel discussion this, <laughs> spe this specific question isn't answered, please ask again again, because then we can talk with the different, we can pass it on to the linguists, the project managers, and also the management of Supertext. Any other questions? We have time for one last question. Maybe two as well. <laughs> I can't see it, uh, I can't um, say it in English. <laughs> um, 
Warum ist man erst jetzt, also ich habe Englisch nicht studiert, deswegen, also bevor ich mich hier gerade breche und mich keiner versteht, also wenn es noch so äh, deeply plain language auf Englisch sein sollte, sage ich es lieber auf Deutsch. Warum ist man erst jetzt darauf gekommen, dass die meisten Leute die Texte nicht verstehen, die so veröffentlicht werden? <lacht> und äh, Ergänzungsfrage, Ergänzungsfrage ähm, leistet man da nicht Vorschub? Auch, ähm, also wir senken das Niveau damit das Niveau weiter sinkt. Yeah, so the question was, why are we only starting to talk about this now? And are, aren't we just uh, lowering the language level? But we're going to talk about it uh, in the panel um, discussion, actually. Yeah. And the last question. Yes, it's more practical. Uh, you mentioned the uh, Bürotal uh, training. Yes. Do you know if they offer training only for plain English or also plain French or other languages? They work with uh, a lot of companies all th uh, over Euro Europe. <laughs> Sorry. Cool, thank you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>